We are in the second hour of the show, and you know what time it is. We've got uh, a special guest who I'm co-hosting with uh, today. And uh, as uh, per usual, we now are basically going to have a little bit of a chat with her to get to know her better. Uh, we just uh, played you Afro Traction, and the name of the song is Gipelele. And before that one, it was Ade Kule Gold with a Lucky Day, the name of the song is Sina. But before that one, it was 702. We took you way back, and the name of the song is Where My Girls At. So, um, in the second half of the show, as we usually do, we put a spotlight on our guest. And today, we have uh, somebody special. Uh, she is known on the on the camera, behind the camera, she is both. Yeah, a, a both. <laughs> <laughs> so today it's a radio uh, world day, and she's here with us, joining us in the studio. Her name is uh, Lisedi uh, Matsunyani Ferguson. She is uh, a an MC. She is a casting director. She is a content uh, creator. She is a production manager as well. And uh, she took time to come and have a bit of a chat with us. And Lisedi. Once more, uh, thank you for making time to come join us and welcome. No, man, thank you for having me. Officially, officially, on our place ready. I know, right? <laughs> We've been trying to set this up, but I'm so glad to, to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's happening. It's yeah. happening. We're excited about it. And uh, let's take it back. I mean, uh, okay. so for most people, particularly in South Africa, for most people uh, around your festive seasons and, and all of that, mm. uh, people that live and work in Jobek, they'll say, I'm going home, right? <laughs> and uh, for you, it's a it's a different kind of situation. It's different because it's home already. Yeah, like, exactly. they, it, when everyone is busy saying that they're going home for the holidays, I am already home. Yeah. Um, I'm home 365 days of the year. If anything, I will travel for the holidays, but I won't be home. Yeah. But yeah, it's always been different and it's always been very funny when people tell me that they're going home yeah. and then I'm just like, well... I'm home. I'm home. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, born and bred in, in, in yep. Joburg, yep. Uh, both sides of the family in Joburg. Most, most, but most sides of the family. So, yeah. my mom, even though she was born in Kimberley, she was raised in mm-hmm. Uh My dad is very much a, a Joburg baby. He's a Soweto baby, but he yeah. also was raised throughout different provinces. Yeah. And then my, 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 my late stepdad, was born and bred in Khaburun, Botswana. And then he moved to Joburg after he married my mom. So, but I, 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 I've I, been here my whole life. <laughs> Didn't go anywhere. It's it's just been Joburg, yeah, Joburg all the way. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I always look at your double barrel saving and, and think. It's a mouthful, isn't it? I, I know. <laughs> I, I, I feel like you're so blessed. I, I mean, uh, share a little bit about that because usually it's when a person is married. Yeah. Uh, that will see the most. But we feel it's, it's a different situation. No, me it's a very different story so what I wanted to do was I wanted to um, basically unite both sides of my family through me because I mean I was raised by both sides uh-huh. you know um, I'm a Matsunyani by blood um, but also in paying homage to you know my, my family my mom my stepdad um, I, I put those surnames together I think it was official in I'd officially changed my name around 2015, but I only got my ID in 2017. And it took you that long? No, you know what it was? Yeah. Um, I think it, it was done. So the only thing I really needed to do was just do the ID. But then mm. I had just given birth to my son in 2015. Yeah. So I was concentrating more on being a mom. And then like after a while, I'm like, no, man, I actually need to change my ID. So I did. And I actually showed it to my dad. Um close to his birthday it was kind of like a birthday present for me to him um because many years ago he surprised me by having his tattoo name uh, my tat my name tattooed on his his arms yeah that was crazy that's special yeah so i wanted to kind of you know pay that back as well um and also just merge our families through me um so so that's really what happened i only changed my passport this year because i had to wait for it to expire oh yeah yeah so that only happened literally end of last year slash this year and and what was his reaction like when Oh man, I made his day. He was so happy. He could. He was cheesing. He could not stop smiling that entire day. I I knew. I was like, yes. 
I but, did it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was it was lovely uh, to see. Amazing stuff. And, and I mean with um these kind of dynamics mm. added to that is the fact that you you were born in families that are amazing creatives, you know. Yeah. And what, what was your childhood like at home and also in different spaces of society? Because obviously you I mean you, you grew up in the public eye. Somewhat, yeah. But yeah. I mean, even though I grew up in the public eye, I think my parents also try to make it as normal for me as possible. Um, in the sense that so my childhood was very was very interesting. I mean, I still had the normal playing outside type of childhood, mm -hmm. but I was also very in tune with the television and with learning words really on the go. Ah. So by the time I could learn how to speak, I started reciting all my days of our lives, building the beautiful things, like watching my parents and generations, you know. So I was that kid. I I, I was incorrigible and I also loved singing when I was younger. And uh, a story that my parents loved telling me, you know, just to to humble me, was that I used to give them <laughs> hell. And whenever we'd go to the shops, there'd always be like a couple of songs that would play that I'd love. And I would throw a tantrum until they'd leave me alone. And I would sing the whole song, performing it for everyone who walked past. I didn't care. Until the song finished. And then I would leave. It, it was crazy. I know yeah. the one song I will never forget, and it's etched into my brain, is Don't Leave Me Go by Black Street. Oh, that's my jam. I, I remember that. So, so I was that kid not really knowing how to talk, but I was belting out those notes, bro. Heavy. I'm sure there's videos somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. that that was literally me. I was always involved in the arts. It was always it, it was a fun time for me. So mm. whenever I would do it, I would always have fun. It was also a bonding point for me and my family and even my siblings as well. My older sister and I would literally just recite lines from movies all the time, all the time, all the time. Yeah. We still do it now at our big age. Um, and those are the things that I really remember, but in terms of schooling and everything else, uh, it was very, very normal. The only time that it didn't feel normal was obviously when we are in public or when it comes to like appearances that I'd go to, to like to go with my family to. And that was the only time I'd really feel like, oh, right. They're known. <laughs> Everyone else sees their face like I see them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But apart from that, I actually had a pretty relatively normal childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you spoke about bonding. You know, mm. uh, what, what, were, what, what are some of the things that, you know, you grew up bonding with your family when you like, you know, very private in your own space doing your thing? So because I come from a blended family, they're very different, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Both of my families are extremely different. So... On my dad's side of the family, the Matsunyanis, we would bond with movies, animation, so anything Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, and just trivia. So 30 seconds is our game. Ah. It gets very personal because we know that game like the back of our hand. <laughs> you know, that's that's us. That's our bonding and karaoke and all those things. So and then competitive as well. With 30 seconds, yeah. Yeah. No, 30 seconds tests friendships. <laughs> it does. I take it seriously. <laughs> and you should take it seriously. And then with, with uh, my, my mom's side of the family, we, we bond more just by speaking or we'll watch comedies together or literally we'll have these little debriefs in the kitchen and then we'll just roast each, roast each other for no, no reason. Uh -huh. We love roasting each other. And it comes out of nowhere. But that's, that's pretty much how we'd also bond and we'd also just sit together for a little bit before we'd all go into our, you know, our respective spaces. And that's, yeah. Mm. So they're very different, but both very effective. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, yeah. It does sound like that. And um, you, you also devoted mother. You, you, yeah. You, you you added a, a bundle of joy to these families. I did, you didn't know. I? <laughs> <laughs> How's that part of your life in terms of challenges and you know and joys that comes with it? Because I mean, we we see the relationship you have with Roro, and yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Um, well, you see what I what I allow you to see. I don't put Roro that much out there for, for the same reason my parents didn't put me that much out there. But I mean, motherhood. Whew. How about a trial and error? It was, it's very trial and error, but I'm enjoying getting to know him and he's enjoying getting to know me. And apart from me being his mom, I like getting to know Ro as a person. Mm -hmm. And he's such a phenomenal young man. Like, oh, the biggest sweetheart. Like, he... I don't know if you've ever watched Twilight. Like, you know that baby that everyone just started, like, just yeah. loving just yeah. from seeing them? That's what Roro pretty much is to, to us and to, to, to everyone that comes in contact with them. That, that is a precious boy. I yeah. love him so much. I mean, he's precious. I, I, mm. I, I love his 
spiritual side more because yeah no my my so my stepdad told him that is it yeah my stepdad and his grandmother um his dad's mom uh-huh. were very, both very spiritual people so he learned how to pray and also he goes to church when he's with his grand so they they the, they were the prayer warriors and mm. that th- that's how Ro ended up like that amazing yeah right? i can't take all that credit no 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 no, no. that ain't <laughs> i'll give credit where it's due yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah Ah, man. So I, I, I mean, we, we, we see your, your family, you know, from social media. How close mm. is it, you know, and, and, and loving? How, how do you make sure that you know you keep embracing that and safeguarding that? Because it's something very commendable, and I, I believe that many families, you know, look up to it as they see it. It's a consistency, really. Um, it's not something that you can just do overnight and then just expect it to kind of maintain itself, like we we all have to put in the work in terms of just making sure that there's an open line of communication, that we still feel safe around each other and making sure that we are each other's safe space Mm -hmm. so that whatever happens in the outside world won't come in to where we are at home, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So it's really just making like time to consistently find a way to bond or at least speak or at least see each other throughout the day, you know, um, and, and just, you know, keep that love alive. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's literally, it's a choice that we all make every single day. Yeah. yeah. And, and that makes a union. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, it's been unfortunate that, you know, you, you lost your dad uh, late, late last year. Mm-mm. We're in 2023. Oh. Yeah, I'm still in lost them in 2021. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but I mean, uh, losing somebody that dear, mm. uh, is, it's always challenging. How how were you able to deal with that um, that loss and and perhaps share with us some of your fondest memories with him? I don't think I fully dealt with it. Mm. If I'm going to be very honest, um, I think I don't think anyone can say they have fully dealt with mm. a loss of a parent or if anyone that they've you know loved so deeply. Um, it's an ongoing process. It's it's a daily thing. Some days are better than others. Um, I miss him every single day. I mean, grief at the at the at the root of it all is is a love that has no place True. to go to. So trying to keep that love alive, which in turn keeps his memory alive, but it not really having a place to go to is always very not only confusing but very rough. Mm. Um, on on just like one's emotional psyche. So I mean, I I can't say I have the 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 steps on on how to navigate it. I really don't. I'm figuring this out as I go along. Yeah. It's it's a daily process. Some days are good. Some days are bad. Some days I fully accepted that he's gone. Other days I think it's a bad nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it's it it's one of those that you really just have to take into stride every single day and make sure that whatever I'm doing in my life and also in Ro's life and just how it impacts me and, you know, the rest of my family, that it's things that he would be proud of, Mm -hmm. you know, and kind of just enjoy my moments here on earth, not only for myself and for my family that are here, but also for my family that aren't. Yeah. 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 So the fondest memories? Oh my gosh. Um, (laughs) My dad and I would watch stand up together so we'd always have these like punchlines. Yeah. And him and I were very, very quick on banter. We were very, very quick on banter. Like he'd say something and I'd immediately reply, knowing exactly where it's from. Uh-huh. And we just burst into laughter. And a lot of the times it would leave my mother so clueless. She'd be like, How did you get that? And I'm like, bruh, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> you know, it, it's some kind of a born going. It going was in. no 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 like we were we were quick with it. Like yeah. the, like I think I also got a, quite a bit of my wit. I got my wit definitely from both my dads, actually. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I'm very sharp tongued and I'm very quick witted. So yeah. it, I, I definitely get get it from both of them. Um, so it would be that I would make him like tasty wheat. It even ended up as an article for some unknown reason. Tasty wheat, guys. I make like tasty wheat. Tasty wheat became an article because of how I made it, or rather because my dad literally would uh, record stories saying my child made me this and it's his yeah. favorite porridge in the world. But it was just like, apparently it was porridge that went to private school. <laughs> so it's just, you know, those small moments, but also just seeing how he was also, how also he bonded with Ro. I mean, him yeah. and Ro were inseparable. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, that also counts as a big bonding point for me. And just watching the two of them spend time together. Like, they were literally twins. It was so mm. cute. Mm. Yeah, those are definitely some of my fondest memories. Amazing stuff. Eh? Yeah. Amazing stuff. And and, and thank you for, for, for going there with us. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no problem. Um, it is one of those things that others are able to, you know, to yeah. draw strength from. And uh, I always say I admire how, as a family, you were able to, to move um, obviously not moving on in, in, a, in a sense of forgetting, but in his own... To move forward, and, yeah. And, you know, and, and make sure that his legacy keeps going, mm. you know. And uh, what, what encouraged that for, for all of you? He would have done the same. Mm. I think a lot of it was, what would he do? Yeah. And that's literally what kept us going. It was like, okay, we have this to deal with today. What would he do? <sighs> let's see if we can do that if not let's see how far we can get and you just have to keep on moving forward mm -hmm. you might not be running you might not be walking you might be like you know that cheetah crawl that you yeah. do in the army yeah that was us for like a good year and some change hmm. but we kept moving forward until then we started at least getting some form of strength i guess from each other but also just ourselves and even from him yeah um wherever he is and then kind of you know going okay maybe i can crawl a little bit more okay maybe i can walk you might trip a little but then you have to keep going back up because it's exactly what he would have done yeah so that's that's what kept us going incredible incredible and i'm still in conversation with sadie she is lisedi matsunyani ferguson no i corrected hmm. <laughs> apologies but i had to get it right jessica we are live <laughs> <laughs> Ferguson and uh, we were just getting to learn to know her a little bit more uh, from her childhood until now and we're gonna go back into music when we come back we get to know her professional side of life yeah we are so do stay tuned after this we are back on For the hour eight o'clock, that is Lira with something inside so strong, and I think this one is actually fitting given uh, what uh, the city has been sharing with us in studio, and uh, she's such a, a fun person to be around. I must say, the city, you've got this man genuine laughter, like it's so authentic. Like, thanks. Where does that come from? <laughs> um. Oh wow. I, like, what do I say to that? Um. I guess it comes from both sides of the family like yeah. we laugh from the gut and i know a lot of my laugh i actually get from my dad's side of the family because ah. we sound like that but then also i do have quite a bit of my mom's laugh as well so yeah. it's a weird combination it depends <laughs> on how funny things are and like it can go from what you've been hearing now to a wheeze to the the sprinkler laugh like the yeah <laughs> like it, it's it, it could change at any time i don't know what to tell you it, it just depends it really it, it just depends yeah. yeah but it's lovely though thank and, you and thank you thank you and we, we need more of this we need more of this <laughs> thanks man i appreciate it <laughs> yeah so let's look a bit about uh the the journey of your career right mm. you 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 describe yourself as a student of the industry and the craft yes uh, and, and can you share with us what do you mean by that um one can never be finished learning about the craft and about the industry and just the, the the mediums and the talent so as much as yes i've studied it it doesn't mean that that's it that's all i need to know no things keep on changing in our industry things keep on changing with performance and with our mediums you know um so i will forever be a student of the craft because i'll I, I acknowledge that there will always be something more to learn yeah. and, and there'll be something more that I can be taught or that I can teach others, you know, as well. So mm -hmm. it's always, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process yeah. that, that I'm, I'm devoted to. And, and, and you do um, different things, mm. right? Um, what's a typical day like? Or oh, it's never the same. It's never the same. And I mean, currently I'm on sabbatical, <laughs> so like, my day right now is me in bed. I'm jealous, right? Oh, no, 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 please don't. No, 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 no. I, I think I've, I've outgrown my, my sabbatical. I've it's outgrown the rest. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of being tired, you know. Um, but I mean, what a, a usual day for me used to look like would be waking up, taking my son to school, and then I'd go to set. Um, thankfully everything was around the same area. I'd go to set, literally do everything that I'd need to do there. It would be a full 12 hour day for me. 
fetch Ro during my lunch break, take him home, go back to set, and then continue working. And then when it was like really, really busy, so like for example, when we were shooting KOJ and the Queen simultaneously, mm-hmm. I was more on the KOJ set, but what, which meant I was in different parts of Joburg uh, at very awkward times. I remember our first shooting week, call time was 3 a.m. A.m. Because we'd have to shoot the night scenes before the day. Yeah. So it would be that or it would be like very, very late. See, like no day was really the same, but also the work, a lot of my work, uh, apart from me needing to be on set, I could also do a lot from either my phone or through my laptop. So I was always mobile and I was always running around. So that's what I got used to. And then from literally that to nothing and just resting, it was like, it was jarring Actually, because my body was like, mm, what, what is this now? I know you said you wanted to rest, but this is a bit lazy. <laughs> don't you think? Aren't you lazy right now, Sets? Aren't you? So um, that's, that's also me trying to now like fight myself and be like, dude, you deserve this. Because yeah. it's been every day for almost seven years of constant working. That's long. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to take this risk. And, and KOJ, you mean Kings of Joburg? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. All right. And, and, and I mean, it's a lot to do. Mm. Um, what would you say kept you going in terms of balancing or trying to balance that everything, you know, works out? I don't know about balance. <laughs> <laughs> I I would not call it balance. Um, it it again was the moving forward, uh-huh. day by day, and you have to kind of roll with whatever you're given at that moment. Be like, and yo, we were throwing some punches during mm-hmm. both shoots, you know. Um, and literally going, oh, okay, take it this first, and then kind of move there, and then okay, what is needed here? cool do that and literally you have to take it like step by step otherwise you're just going to be overwhelmed and that's not to say that i wasn't i was (laughs) badly no 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 the the stress i was under during winter when shooting kings of Joburg and also shooting queen at the same time my god um if you are ever blessed with the opportunity to do two productions at the same time this is all i'm going to say don't It's supposed to be a blessing, right? It is a blessing, <laughs> but please make sure you are wired for it because it's 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 hectic. Yeah. Like, I remember after having shot Kings of Joburg, and Kings of Joburg, our schedule was so weird mm-hmm. in the sense that we were shooting Sundays, but Friday was our day off, right? And after we'd finished shooting Kings of Joburg, I remember waking up on Sundays with this mad anxiety <laughs> that i'm late so <laughs> i think that only went away after maybe two three weeks maybe a month because i was just like <gasps> and then i'm like oh wait no we're done <sighs> and it makes sense because you've been doing it for quite some time because you've been doing so it like, like every so week for eight weeks and you're used to the weird times that you wake up and then your body clock is like a mess for like the rest of the time because you're going oh, why am i up right now i'm not doing anything like i have a full weekend i can rest yeah <sighs> where you can't yeah, yeah. so that learning to 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 get out of that and to do debrief from that has been quite the journey as well yeah, yeah. And, and, and you work very hard this city um i think we need to put that out there you work so hard that uh to you it's not even about working with family mm. um you you make sure that you pay your dues in, absolutely in the industry mm. and sometimes that um you know, coming from outside can be perceived in in, a, in in certain ways, and some of those it's people measuring your work against your parents' work. So sort of oh yeah, that's a given. You, yeah, you that's know? a given. Yeah, and and um, your thoughts about that? I think whoever I've had the 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 chance to prove wrong, I did. Um, I think it's always going to be the first perception that anyone goes to like, ah, she's a Nepo baby. Mm -hmm. She can just ask for this or do this. And like, she's in there and it's like, no, I actually worked for this. Mm -hmm. I worked from the bottom up. I was a whole production runner in 2015. Like I was literally getting people coffee. I was delivering scripts. I was printing at the office. I was learning how to do a call sheet. I was at the bottom in 2015 and from there to now come into where i am right now as a casting director uh production manager or maybe even producer if i really like 
put my mind i'm sure i can produce i've just never really produced like at that level yeah. but having learned everything and having worked up the ranks that i have worked up i've coordinated i've done production management i've done cast coordinating i'm now casting director i've actually held the auditions i've read for people to 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 do their lines and and record them you know um and i've also done auditions myself as an actress as well you know so it, it's it's one thing to say that yeah i'm here because of the, the the opportunity i was given by my family which granted worked for me but i never once took that for granted and nor did i ever feel like i was entitled to it either yeah. i i worked and i still continue to work yeah. for 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 the, the the industry and the craft that i'm in because as much as you will think at the very beginning that now she's here because of abc by the time you leave that production you will have a completely different outlook on not who i am not only who i am but also the work that i do yeah mm. and then having started at the entry level yeah if i should put it that way how how would you say it, it, it's important uh you know in terms of the lessons that you learned mm. and, and the experience that you acquired uh for you to be able to be as good as you are today i learned a lot whilst at the bottom and i mean even though like once you move up the ranks the, the learning never ends and this is where i keep saying that i'm a student of the craft the learning never ends but having been given the opportunity to learn from the bottom and actually see each and every single department and how they work and being in the meetings and taking notes or even taking mental notes for myself like oh, okay this is what you do when this happens this is how a production is run and also just seeing the way that my parents would handle certain things as executive producers and just also learning from them by observing a lot of my my job especially when i was like uh, an intern or a runner was observation mm -hmm. and i think that's where i got the most out of it where i'm like oh okay so this is how you do this and then once i started practicing it myself then it it, it proper like set in as a core memory yeah yeah amazing stuff um and, and it took you years and somebody can, can, can seven that's a long time. seven that's a long yeah time, okay so, so you basically did your 10,000 hours? Seven years. I've done my 10,000 hours and I only became casting director in 2021. It was not something that I was just given from the beginning of the Queen. No, I was a casting coordinator or a production coordinator. And then I worked up through all the other productions that we did. Yeah. So no shame. I've paid my dues. <laughs> it's been seven years behind the scenes, but in the industry yeah. as a whole, I've been in this industry for more than 12 years. Yeah. So... No, the dues are paid, bro. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and and, and uh, being a casting director, I I it, it's not as an easy job. I no. mean, you you see so much talent, right? Yeah. What, what do you say uh, helps you to to get it right every time? Because I mean. We've, we've no one said I get it right every time. <laughs> well, most of the time. Most of the time, no. Like a good, a good, a good ninety percent sure I'll get it right. But yeah. like, there will be that ten percent. I'm still very much human. Yeah. I still like make mistakes. Sometimes you will think that the, the the person will work for the character, and then you actually see the response to it, or you see how they are on set, and it's a little bit different to how they were in the audition. Um, and I take that responsibility and I learn from those lessons. Like I, they're else, but they're else for lessons. Yeah. Um, so man, I've, I think the, 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 the most tedious part of it is when it's open auditions, because I know there's such a, there's a lot of unearthed talent, but having to go through each submission, one man, and then you see that there's also people that don't really take it seriously. Like you get sent TikToks. Or you get sent people miming over others' dialogue, and that's not that's not really acting. Like, give me something I can work with, or getting like those with like the weird filters, uh -huh. and it's like this isn't professional. And I can tell you're not taking this seriously, and that's when I get tired, and it's just like, <sighs> and having to sift through all of that to then find you know the diamonds in the rough. Then you go, okay, cool. It's a very tedious process, yeah. extremely tedious, but it, it, it's become very rewarding, especially when you, you find those ones. Mm. And I think for me, the, 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 the most rewarding casting I did was probably the, the four Cosa Brothers okay. towards the end of the Queen, Brutus's yeah. Sons. Those were, because yeah. those were open auditions. So I know one came from like um, 
an agency it was an agency audition and then the other three actually submitted via open okay. and i watched them and i was like yeah no it's these guys and seeing how everyone just gelled together was just mm. chef's kiss yeah so I, I, i'm proud of myself for that one <laughs> yeah oh, congratulations. and for, for for koj as well i'm very proud for the cast the yeah. castings i did actually in 2022 i'm very proud of mm. so for unmarried for kings of joburg for 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 the queen yeah so would you consider them as like the the height of your career so far? So far, absolutely, yeah. Uh, Especially Kings of Joburg. That's uh, a Netflix production. What? <laughs> of course. A casting director for Netflix, please. That's huge. It's huge. It's, it's global. Yeah, it's it's global. It's so global. I, I again, I don't take these things for granted. I really don't. So yeah. Yeah. So besides that, you do other things: content creation, acting. Yeah. Um. Oh, what do you find yourself drawn to the most? Acting. Acting's always been my first love. Why is that? It's always been my first love. Yeah. Since the very tender age of Tot <laughs> it, it it has always been my first love. Um it's all I knew in my childhood. Um where I would literally be either reenacting certain things that I've seen on TV or I'd be doing school plays, um, where I even I was Simba in the Lion King that was in my school play at the time and I knew my lines and everyone else's lines. And I was six, six years old. Um, but I've always enjoyed the feeling of being able to tell stories in whatever way possible. So be it through acting, be it through dancing. I don't dance anymore. I used to, um, we don't need to get into that right now <laughs> through singing, through musicals, you know, that was, that was, that was me. And I found a lot of peace in that as well. Like it became my solace. It became my therapy. Um, so I can never leave that behind. Yeah. No. Yeah. That is the voice of Liz Sadie Matsumani Ferguson and uh, she is taking us through her life as a professional and it's, um, it, it's quite enlightening, Sadie, because I think Thank that, you. That there are certain things that we see you know, from outside but yeah. it's only when, like you tell your story, we get to learn more yeah. and understand and also make sense of why other things happen in certain ways, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Definitely. So it is now five minutes before the hour, eight o'clock. We're going to go into music uh, to let her breathe a bit. When we come back, we are wrapping up our discussion. That is the legendary Lebu Matosa with A Brand New Day. And we started with Big Nas with Emma Sanye. And and city was shocked to say New Year. Yeah, because I just said, yeah, Happy New Year. I'm like, in Feb? <laughs> no, no. It's Emma Sanye uh, by uh, Big Nas. Um, yeah, that, that's how they do it in Germany. <laughs> I know, I, I know. Sing trumps. I, I know. Yeah. Right? It's gonna take a while. It's too it's soon. Gonna take us out it's, of the system. Right? It's too soon. Yeah. 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 So, um, I said it, before we we went uh, to to the break, um, we spoke a lot about your work. But yeah. The other aspect of you, which um, interesting enough, uh, they just spoke about it now live. It's the is the sense of fashion. Because <laughs> right? that, that, that <laughs> okay. I, I find it fun, chic, and also classy and elegant at the same time. How 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 would you define your style? Mad eclectic. I don't really subscribe to one sense of style. Yeah. Um, how I look on the red carpet or at any event, depending on what the theme is, I will make sure I understand that assignment. But also kind of keeping true to myself and making sure that there is some level of comfort towards it. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, you're not going to feel co confident if you're not comfortable. True. You know, um, and then even just now, my regular style. Ah, guys, my regular style. 90% <laughs> of my wardrobe is black. It's my favorite color. Um, so I always... And also there's like a, a, a mix of either baggy with tight. Mm -hmm. So like right now I have this big baggy like leather shirt on but then i have a crop top and leggings on uh, tight leggings yeah so it, it it's it's very different but like a lot of it is um you know rooted in comfort and then when it comes to like glamming up i'll glam up yeah. but i'll also make sure that it's true to me and i know i'm just very different mm -hmm. to to how everyone else looks yeah. so i'll also just uh you know kind of emphasize that as well mm -hmm. plus i have a lot of tattoos so i also show those yeah. off as well yeah. because it, it also just serves as part of the outfit but also it's mm -hmm. everything then becomes an art piece yeah. and and yeah. i i am then the art 
that you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and what is it that you wish that people could perhaps know about you that they're not aware or don't know about you? I know I have a resting B face. I am well aware of it. Is but it? do say hi. I won't bite. <laughs> I really, I won't bite. Like, I, I, I get it. I, I can look intimidating now and again um, when I'm just out here minding my business and breathing air. But say hi. I really don't bite. I really, really don't buy it. I just wish people knew that. Could, could, could that be because of the kind of work that you do? Yes, or? absolutely. Okay. It's, it's kind of like just keeping a guard up and making sure that, you know, whoever you kind of encounter, either A would be more business related or B, you can then kind of see who's like trying to take a chance. Makes sense. You know, but even in that, I'll be nice about it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm not just going to go, hey, sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. It's, it's really yeah. not me. Um, yeah. It, it, that's that's never been the person I am. So like, if if you see me walking down the street, you can say hi, but then walk on by. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm a lot nicer than I look. So, so in your DMs, can they say hi? My DMs are closed. Okay, they're closed. Um, I even told, I even said this on 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 my friend's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, and I said my DMs are closed. If you, if I don't follow you. You cannot send me a DM, it'll not go through. Is that because there's somebody who's in the front line? No. Or... No, no, I'm very Valentine free. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> just check it. No, it's just it's it. no no no, it has nothing to do like with yeah. that. It's just that I found that a lot of my DMs then became very work related on my mm. personal Insta. Mm. So it, it then just got very boring very quickly and then I'd start getting DMs at like 10 o'clock on a Sunday night saying, hey, I want to be an actor. And you're like, I want to sleep. Like, can I sleep, actually? Um, so after a while, I'm like, for peace of mind, close everything. If you if you need to get a hold of me professionally, my email is there. Mm -hmm. um, but that that also means that, you know, the to the future love of my life, I, I want to say this right now, the day before Valentine's yeah. Day. Hi, yeah. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> to the future love of my life, uh, listen. Not all my DMs are closed. Kune Twitter. Yeah. Kune email. Uh-huh. There's this but like with email, like I said, like there's a lot that you kinda have to go through and like you have to make sure that I but, see but you it. Do, you do respond to your emails. I, mean, I do. No, I, I really do. But yeah. like the, like make it an email worth reading. You know what I mean? Capture my attention. Um make it special. <laughs> make it spe like make me remember you. Like be famous, not infamous. Because there's some emails I've received that have gone very left, and I'm just like, okay, what is this? Mm -mm, not like this, guys. So, like, to the future love of my life, trust me, you'll see me very soon. Hopefully, if I don't, if I don't know you already, but uh, if I don't, you know, there's there's other there's other avenues to connect with me. Yeah, yeah. you know, if you're really serious, you get already, the Twitter DMs. Share my decision. LinkedIn, like. Get it somewhere. Show me that you are here. You know. <laughs> and this is why I'm an idiot. So, what, what's the description of, of this future someone? My 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 future man. Oh my god. Um, has to be kind. Has to definitely be kind. Love kids and slash or animals because I have quite a few dogs. Um intelligent but also emotionally intelligent uh, um rooted in spirituality i'm not necessarily fussy about what kind of religion or spirituality it is mm -hmm. have a good head on your shoulders have ambition um but also have an understanding for humanity yeah you know um and a good relationship with your family because that will translate into your relationship and just a good sense of self and a good sense of self-awareness and yeah. knowing who you are, good, bad, and the ugly, um, but constantly making the effort to, to be better. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, that's essentially what we're all pretty much doing in, in this life. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't hurt if you were good looking. You know, it wouldn't hurt, you know, have, have a good smile at least. <laughs> I can see everything else, but have a good smile, you know. Show me you take care of yourself, you know. Um, 
size wise i mean taller than me would help but like significantly taller than me because i'm short so if i say taller than me i don't mean like just here you know you mean tall yeah like i like looking up now like <laughs> no when i was younger i hated tall tall guys yeah but now i'm like you know let me let me climb that skyscraper <laughs> let me be your king Checklist. kong come <laughs> on <laughs> Guys, there, there it is. I, I, I got here to tell you. So you should know if you fit that profile or not. It's up to you guys. I, I, I tried. All I'm saying is good luck. <laughs> so let's talk about the future. What can you mm. expect from you in the future? Whether it's work or personal wise? Personal, I'll never know. Uh -huh. Like I say, I take everything day by day. Um, professionally, oh man. Um, love to be more on the big screen in front of the screen mm -hmm. um but definitely i'll still be doing some work behind uh -huh. but as to what the future holds i don't know man but like it, it's definitely me creating something so you'll see me very soon yeah. and you'll see me either be the creator of something or you'll see me front and center y'all cannot get rid of me i'm here to stay, <laughs> here to stay. please I've done my 10,000 hours. Let me show you what I can do for real, for real. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's, that's, that's literally me. But like just more than anything, just being a better person for myself, for my son and just for my loved ones, you yeah. know, and just consistently improving and consistently learning yeah. um, and consistently being happy because that is something I'm also working towards, maintaining my happiness and maintaining yeah. my peace. Um, yeah. That's what's in, that's that's the future for me. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Amazing stuff, Sadie. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having, having me, to man. Chat with us. Thank it's, you. It's been it's been empowering. It's been enlightening. It's been fun. Thank as you. Well. And I uh, think from off place we wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, we always say um, from from your lips to God's ears. And Indeed. God knows uh, what uh, your heart's desires are. Uh, we'll always be following you, checking you out, yeah. and supporting you, the work that you do like the kings of jobex season two which mm. is out now yes it is on okay. netflix catch it and you might might you might see me small small couple of seconds nothing yeah. heavy you might see me on kings of jobex but if you don't see me but you'll definitely see the actors that um i've worked with and and how like we that was literally a labor of love yeah. the season and the way it came out i mean it is beyond our wildest dreams so thank you so much for those that have watched it already y'all kept us at number one for for a little over two weeks we're now at number two because of you because we can't compete with that show but i mean <laughs> but it's fine well, we're now. still on the top 10 so please continue to watch it um if not rewatch it make sure that you like it you love it and yeah we 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 might might have a season three if all goes well um but it's not the last of me it's not the last of ferguson films um we'll be back we'll be back right now we, we're just taking some time to recover and we're taking some time to to create and to to make sure that you know we continue to give the best so that's that's it from me on my side and also on behalf of the familia and on behalf of the company. So, yeah. She is Lisedi Matsumiani Ferguson. Sedi with two eyes. Sedi with two eyes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's definitely her. And it's been such a pleasure being with her tonight. And uh, do subscribe on the YouTube channel. And next week, we have another special guest uh, joining us in studio. So you just have to keep checking out to find out who is coming. But we can see with what we brought today, we only bring the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mwah. Thank you, guys.